and we are live. Ooh. Welcome back to the Jaylee Show Live. Uh, this week we have the wonderful Adam on, who's going to talk to us um, a little bit about the recruitment side of marketing and also building a brand and a whole bunch of other stuff. We've just been chatting off camera like a um a pair of gas bags so uh but in the meantime just want to say thanks for everyone getting in touch it's been it's been really helpful uh suggesting guests is great keep shouting out people that you want to be on the show i'll keep calling them and seeing if they want to be part of it but enough of the enough of the preamble adam sir how are you i'm very well how are you jay you good i'm good i'm good it's um we're now in, uh, I think, the fourth week of isolation. So we did it a, a week earlier um, mm -hmm. than was suggested. And to be honest, it's not too much different for us. Uh, yeah. We got a big, we got a quite quite a big international um, clientele. So we're used to working over Zoom. We're used to working over Dropbox. It's all kind of the same. The, really, the difference for us was is we took the people uh, out of the office as opposed to uh, everything else was kind of working like it beforehand. Yeah, anyway. yeah, 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 sure. How about you? How, how's uh, how's it going so far? Yeah, from from a work perspective, um, things kind of switched off overnight. I'm not one of these people who's going to BS anyone and say, "Oh, we've got you know 70 vacancies live. Everyone apply now." <laughs> it's like anyone who's currently in a role and they've either they're fortunate enough to be still being paid, whether that's from being furloughed or because their employers, you know, kept kept them on and kept them paid. Like yeah. you're really, really fortunate. So it, it's not really a, a smart time to jack your job in, really, for want of a more formal <laughs> phrase. I think, you know, unless you're like a professional footballer or you're a model or you've got some really cool, quirky job where you can kind of afford to be shooting all over the place, for normal people like us, you know, everyone's just sitting tight and watching Netflix and going out mm. for runs. You know, it's it's people are mm. People are doing CVs and things like that, but from a business perspective, it's all very kind of quiet, and people are just sort of chilling out and waiting for it to pass. I think, and a hard time for businesses as well because yeah. I don't necessarily want to bring someone on right now if I'm going to have to have the whole relationship like this for the next X months. Sure, and who knows as well. Um, cool. Well, you've been keeping yourself busy then. What have you been up to? Um, I've been the dog has been walked to death and i have to yeah. just say if he, he is a little bit if he sees a squirrel he's going to lose his mind and he's in the room so <laughs> if you hear a little bark i apologize not very professional um but um but yeah just i've still been working putting things on linkedin talking to mm. candidates talking to clients um going out i've got lucky enough to have some gym equipment at home so i've been doing some nice. gym bits and bobs there are and, so there yeah. are so many people who who are die hard diehard gym goers and they don't have a single piece that nothing mm -hmm. nothing maybe a couple of uh, uh, uh tiny lady weights or something like that right <laughs> <laughs> no the plastic little ones yeah um, one one kilo that's is it the one kilos right i'm yeah. gonna do reps i'm gonna do a million reps um mm. but I've, yeah i've seen on uh, so many people on instagram who are just dying for a kettlebell desperate for a deadlift yeah oh, yeah i'm I, yeah i'm i'm a I, I like going to the gym picking heavy things up or heavy as i can and putting them down again i'm never gonna have a six pack <laughs> i drink far too much guinness and wine to ever and i love food so i'm never gonna be one of those <laughs> great great some great some cheese on me kind of guys but yeah i love the gym and it's like a community thing as well lots of friends that go there so yeah yeah, being motivated to work out in the garden is just not the same for me. But so, what do you yeah. focus on? Do you focus on powerlifting? No, not well. No, I just go and pick stuff up. Like <laughs> and my squat, my squat technique is absolutely shocking because I absolutely destroyed my knee last year playing football on a stag do. So you're singing my song. The, you are singing my the song. Yeah, <laughs> I know so, it well. That's, and that's that's what I've missed is that is that camaraderie in the gym as well. Knowing you're going to see the same people there, yeah. etc. And like, I'm very, very, very fortunate. I've got a big old garden. I can get a lot done. Uh, and I've got an online PT who's been amazing and done some sessions with me and such. But oh, good. I'm, I'm also working out on bumpy grass and stuff and things. It's all. But, you know, I, what, what I am enjoying about the whole isolation is just seeing how many people are at least trying to focus on a bit of fitness. Yeah. I think maybe 10 years ago, we would have all just sat and opened 16 bags of Quavers and got involved. <laughs> <laughs> or 16 crates of beer, whichever you prefer. But yeah, That's what got, yeah, yeah, but obviously yeah. Beer, per, beer per pack of Quavers, of course. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But no, I've, I, do you know what I've done? I've downloaded that couch to 5K. I've okay. never been one to run. So I'm, I'm like six foot five and 19 stone. I'm quite a big lump. Yeah. So run it, running is not something I've ever really enjoyed, especially <laughs> since I dislocated my knee. But I'm doing it and it's, getting me outside getting me running trying to get me fitter and stuff so i'm enjoying it but mm -hmm. yeah i feel all right it is and i, I I'm, it's what 
very interesting speaking to people. It's people whose businesses have dropped out completely, um, mm. who are like in bad places or really good places. But I'm also speaking to people who are like busy as anything and also letting themselves get in a bad place. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of PMA going around at the moment. We've got to keep a keep a, yeah. somewhat of a positive positive mental attitude. So yeah, Adam, exactly. It's a really weird time. Obviously, there is going to be a ton of people out of work now. As you said, mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to keep hold of, hold of your job right now, um, you're holding on to it with both hands, which means a bunch of people are going to be looking for roles in the future. You work, you know, t tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what specific industry do you focus on? So we are I run a business called Russell and David, um, and we are we describe ourselves as a marketing headhunter. So if you've got kind of recruitment agency, and I'm not doing this as a hype thing to say anyone's better than anyone else, but if you've got a recruitment agency and a, like an exec search firm, we're kind of in the middle and purely focused on marketing. So we don't run a candidate database. We don't really hold CVs on file. We're okay. kind of organic in the way that we talk to candidates. And every candidate we speak to is always about a specific position. Okay. And we're really honest in the sense that we get a lot of candidates that message us on LinkedIn and call the office and say, you know, can you find me a role? And the honest answer is I, I am really, really well placed to help you mm. if you are what one of my clients want at the time that you need a new job. <laughs> and I, 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 that sounds bad, but it's the truth. You know, there's no point in me giving you 10 minutes of, of sort of lip service and, and <laughs> saying, oh, you know, yeah, these are the jobs that are around and this that, and the other, because if they're not specifically right for you, then it's mm. kind of a, a waste of your time i um, used to hate that i used to hear that so much for years i never worked in sales like I, I, now i'm very much you know like I, I adore sales but for a long time i didn't work in sales worked in customer service mm -hmm. and i'd be talking to people constantly who would be like what do you think about maybe an admin role and i'm like nah i'm a customer service <laughs> and they were like cool but you know you're very you're, you're good in front of people how about some sales and i was like nah i'm a customer service person <laughs> like mm. it's just because just because you have seven uh, roles to fill doesn't mean I want to be shoehorned into something for a no, career. Completely um, agree. Okay, so what, what what is it then that people can do at the moment to get themselves? Obviously, like you say, you could refresh your CV if you're looking at it. Should you be doing online learning? Should you be doing courses? What would you suggest to people who are looking to get themselves out of hole? Firstly, I would make sure that whatever you're doing is specific to you. As in, if you've watched an Instagram video where a guy has said, read my book and you'll make money, don't be a prat and buy it and read it because you don't know whether that's actually relevant to you or not so i would always start with the kind of the goal and work backwards right Sorry, the, the, the dog's on the move i'm just waiting for him to kick off <laughs> um yeah I, I would say make sure that whatever you're doing is relevant to you so if you're a javascript software developer yeah there's not really a point in going and buying a book on how to valet your car unless that's something that you're into um and I also think LinkedIn is massively important because there's so many people who put so much different kinds of content. Some prefer to write like me. Some people prefer to do videos, some do sure. podcasts and like live streams and things like that. So get out there and follow the people that are relevant to your industry that you think you're going to get some value from. And I think value is the key word mm. during this time, personally. <laughs> Yeah, in a big way, because I, you know, I've, um, there's some podcasts, which I'm diehard fan of. And right now I'm not really listening to them because I don't want to hear the same thing about COVID over and over again. I want yeah, a little exactly. escapism. Um, mm -hmm. where, whereas on other bits and pieces, I've been diving straight into it because I've got a little extra time to learn on things, which yeah. I haven't necessarily been doing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's great. As I've I've found so much value just from following different people on on LinkedIn. Um, you know, some it's it's great how much it's changed over the last decade from being essentially a great big CV library to mm -hmm. actually being a place where you you know I get I get my business on, man. Yeah, <laughs> I go yeah, out yeah, and I, I connect with people who might be able to help, or we might be able to work with. We might be able to help them. So yeah. People I just might be able to never help but learn from. Um, yeah. I don't think enough enough people are kind of getting out there and doing it. No, so, no, I agree. See, obviously, look, you mentioned LinkedIn. Um, you put, you got a great following on LinkedIn of a really, really nicely engaged audience as well. How did it start? How did you start? You know, everyone wants to know how to grow a following. Everyone knows wants to know how to get more. Get, you know, how do I get more likes? How do I get my posts out there? How do I start to engage people? How did yeah. you start to get around it? Um, I just started sort of thinking out loud on LinkedIn, <laughs> really. Um, and I'm I'm one of these people that I'm I'm very very passionate about what I do, and I know that that word's thrown around a lot, but 
even just this morning, I was speaking to a friend of mine who's an office manager, and she was telling me that there is a recruitment firm who obviously Sharp mentioned who are advertising a role for her business that she works right. for okay. with no agreed terms. There's been no conversation had. Oh, and I was absolutely fuming because you just don't do it. And, you know, it's that the path like getting upset about seeing people do things sort of incorrectly and cocking up that then made me think, right, I'm going to start voicing these opinions and start <laughs> writing things. And I've always enjoyed writing. So I just sort of started posting sort of little snippets and opinions and sort of writing the wrongs and kind of saying a lot of things that other people kind of agreed with but didn't want to say themselves. So <laughs> there'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of, uh, say I wrote a post about, you know, how clients should treat candidates, for example. There'll be yeah. a lot of people who work for your big five recruitment firms that have to go to work in a certain color tie every day and aren't really allowed to create a personal brand. And they'll <laughs> sit there and go, I can't say that, but the next best thing is liking that post because I agree with everything this bloke's saying. Sure. So I think that's kind of how it started. Um, and then it's just kind of carried on, I think. And I just write <laughs> things and try and be honest and be authentic and it doesn't suit everybody but then that's the whole point of personal brand so yeah and and how do you listen to um right so a lot, a lot, a lot of people i speak to uh, are very aware of the algorithms and how they work and when they post and you know what they're doing with engagement have you mm -hmm. done that do you make sure that after you post you're engaging with the first amount of comments is there any tricks and stuff that you use um, I don't, to be honest, I've never, I've never looked into the algorithms as I in, I tell. don't, yeah, I've never looked into them. So I don't know whether what I do is right or not, but the only thing that someone said to me once, which seemed to ring true, if you put a post out on LinkedIn, mm. if it gets, if it does quite well in terms of engagement within the first sort of five or 10 minutes, then it's going to do well. And mm. that's usually an indication that your numbers are going to be quite good. Um, but again, I try and interact with as many people commenting as I can, um, whether that's just liking their comment or replying or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, I think the, the only, the only thing, like I said, that I've sort of noticed is that, that the, if you get a decent amount of engagement early on, like, you know, in, in 10 minutes, you might get 10 likes, sure. 15 likes or something like that. Then it's yeah. an indication that the post will probably do all right. No, it's kind of got out there. It does feel like that, doesn't it? In uh, mm. uh, some, you can sit watching and being like nothing. Nothing, no one. Oh, but then there's yeah, other ones you can exactly. just you you know you can just leave that to be to kind of spin yeah. off on 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 its own. Yeah. Um, so uh, mostly text based, which is great, right? So mm -hmm. most most things that you're writing, which is great, because so many people harp on about video. I'm one of them, mostly because I'm <laughs> <laughs> mostly because I'm dead dead illiterate. And it's because you've just... got that big. It's because you've got that big sexy microphone and you want to use it. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I got a pen as well, Adam. Yeah, fair. All right. Okay. Okay. Right. I like that. I know, but the, the but, yeah, but the thing is, I can't use this, and that's the whole thing. Is <laughs> like, I just, I just wouldn't be able to create content if I was writing stuff out. I'm far too dyslexic okay. for it, and I just kind of slam stuff down. Um, right. Whereas I can kind of do a message out like this. Mm. Um, but it's really nice to see because the views and such can be a little bit skewed when it comes to video because essentially all you have to see is three seconds of a video play, and I have to see fifty percent of the screen. So if it's sat at the bottom while I'm reading your post, if my video yeah. is fifty percent on the screen, mm -hmm. I get a view. Whereas yeah. you know you, you can actually see kind of the engagement a little bit more. Um, so how did you go, kind of you know start, when did you start seeing it kind of blow, blow up a little bit and seeing that kind of engagement happen and start to have to do the uh, do, do responding etc. Um, probably when I started my business because there was nobody to tell me no, <laughs> which is not always a good thing. I'll be completely honest. Um, I have James, James in the office who works with me. He is sometimes my sort of, uh, sort of sense check. He'll sort of stick his head up over his screen and go, well, do you think you should have said that? And sometimes <laughs> a bit of a, you know, sort of devil or sort of angel on my shoulder. But yeah, about, about two, two years ago when I sort of <sighs> didn't, didn't sort of, report into anyone if that makes mm. sense so I, I worked for a recruitment firm who were quite big sort of 100 well i say big 100 120 people yeah much much bigger than my business um sure. and i put a post out sort of talking about internal recruiters and the managing director like forced me to take the post down yeah and but i wasn't i wasn't slating anybody i wasn't saying anything that was going to upset anyone mm. the only people it would have upset were the 
rubbish internal recruiters who were doing the things I was talking about. Who bought potentially clients of... Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you kind of, you do have to be careful, but I think when it comes to personal brand, I think it's, is it Dan Kelshaw, I think, who puts quite a lot of content out? Have I said yeah. his name right? I think yeah, so. he he said something on a podcast with Mike Winnett, I think, about personal brand. Whereas if you've got a hundred followers and you put a post out and you lose twenty followers, mm. that's fine because that's twenty people who didn't really like what you had to say, so they've decided exactly. to unfollow you. So they're not the, probably the sort of people you want as customers or followers anyway. And that really struck a chord with me because <laughs> I just sort of think, you know. It's like if you put a, if you're a Tottenham supporter and you put a post out saying I hate West Ham, and mm. you get fifty people that unfollow you, they're probably West Ham supporters. You didn't want to follow them in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. What so that's point? kind of my sort of ethos with it. I think <laughs> if that makes sense. I love it, but it is. It's so true. And I think the problem is, is, is uh, people get lost in that and they just want loads of followers. I mean, how many people I speak to who bang on and on about the fact, you know, yeah, I got 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. Mm, it's cool. But if you don't get engagement, is it cool? Or is it just, you've hit like, you know, accept or uh, yeah. connect, connect 30,000 times. That seems like a waste of time. I'd much yeah. prefer to have a network of 5,000 people who are actually engaging mm -hmm. and also that I've met most of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Completely agree. My um, uh, a mentor of mine once when I first started working here in a business, um, she was like, I've got like 140 people or like 250 people or something on my LinkedIn. I know all of them. Like I can yeah. contact any one of them and say, hey, mm -hmm. Bobby, can I do something, something? Um, I remember being like, really? Huh. <laughs> that's, that's not in the direction I've been going. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I'd been working in the exhibition industry and and like my, my, my thing was full of exhibition. Like, oh yeah, that's yeah. not really relevant anymore when I'm working in a different yeah. industry. <laughs> it is it is tricky because kind of numbers numbers does do, numbers do breed engagement. Like if you look at any big celebrity on Instagram, like you know, David Beckham could post a picture of a a blank piece of paper and it would get hundreds of thousands of likes because people will just go like that because it's David mm. Beckham. So I think when you reach a certain point in terms of a following, people are just going to like it because they like you, which is yes. great. Like if you've done that, you've completed social media, haven't you? Really? People are liking <laughs> any stuff you put out. That's great. But I think you're absolutely right. I see quite a few people that have got hit that 30 K limit thing. I think it's 30 K limit of connections. And then they, uh, they will put a post out that gets three likes mm. and then you look back through their other posts and it's three likes, four likes, seven likes, no likes, one like. And you kind of think, I mean, life isn't all about likes, but is your audience aligned with the content you're putting out? Exactly. Because it, it's not. So therefore it's a, it's a waste of time. In, it, either you're releasing the worst content in the world or you've connected yeah. with people who like to connect, but that's it. I, yeah. I, I think that's a, it's such a shame. It, I remember we were doing it on, you know, God knows, show my age, but on, on MySpace, on MySpace, <laughs> we, would, we would just sit there and we'd have like MySpace liking parties. Yeah. Little, I remember my, I think my, my granddad, my granddad told me about MySpace. I'm too young to Adam. remember all of that. So, yeah, he did. did Sorry, he? Mate. Well, <laughs> marvellous. It's my birthday this week. Calm down. No, I'm only um, joking. No, I, I think I had, I had a MySpace because I was massively into music when I was like, I still am into music, but MySpace was the like the one for for music back in the day, connecting and, with new artists and, and stuff. little local bands. Yeah, and that was the reason I. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Me, me and my co-founder were in bands, so we had that. But we literally used to sit round, hang out, and just everyone would be like, plow, 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 like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. which was pointless. It's not like this, anyone extra liked the song. Um, mm. And it's a shame to see people use it like that 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they still do. And there's pods as well. I've recently found out about pods. Yeah. You might know more about this than I do. but Sure. So what have you found out? Tell the crowd. So I found out that, well, I, I might have interpreted this completely wrong, but I think a pod is like a collection of people where it might be like a WhatsApp group where someone will post something and they'll copy the link into the WhatsApp group. And yeah. everyone just goes on and instantly likes it to get that initial bit of engagement. Yeah, I was, I was the talking content to... could be rubbish, but they just do it anyway. And I just, oh, just makes me feel a bit funny. Really. <laughs> and I guess it's a way of hacking the two that we've just been talking about. It's a way of having a following who aren't necessarily engaged, but to get yeah. that, get that initial engagement in the first say 10 minutes. I was mm. talking to someone recently who, uh, uh, called it, I thought, uh, you know, basically called a pod, uh, the best name I could think of, which was a, a great big circle jerk. 
um, because <laughs> everyone, everyone loves it. It's all going on well. Um, yeah. I have seen I have seen people get really good uh, results from them just by using that to get get the initial thing. But if you look back, you can, it's the same thing again. If you do a very quick analysis on people's posts, you can qu quickly see. Ah, so they get this. They do get thirty likes, just like the other person you saw gets three likes. They mm. get the same thirty likes without fail every yeah. single time. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Same Absolutely. comment, saying great video. Yeah. That's the other thing as well. Is is it's not like people in in pods tend to actually engage properly because they're getting hammered, right? They're just getting like mm. blah, 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 like this, like this, like this, like this. So yeah. it, people are naturally going to go on and be like, hey, great post, send, great post, yeah, love the video, which is the most useless, like, don't, 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 po I don't need that comment. <laughs> like, no, no, it's you know. exactly right. It's, it's just, I don't know if it sounds a bit childish, but it's cheating, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's cheating. Like say, yeah, it's cheating. Like, it, it kind of, yeah, I mean... I don't know. I've I've had people send me a post before in like a message and say, mm. "Can you give this a like, please?" And my response is always the same, which is, "Hi, thanks for the message. Yeah, I will if I like it. Yeah, if I don't like it, then I won't." And nine times out of ten, it's a brilliant bit of content or it's something that I find quite funny or insightful or whatever. But yeah, people. Yeah, I don't know. It's tricky, it's really. It is a weird one. Look, so you were talking about earlier, right? Uh, uh, Managing director told you to pull down a post because it wasn't in line with the brand. Now you got your ha now you got your hands around the the reins. Um, when have you found that a um, problem? Like when when have you found a negative re review from it? Uh, once touch wood so far, and I mean okay. once to my face. There might be thousands of people out there who think I'm a complete prat for some of the things I say, which is fine, and I accept that. <laughs> but there was one there was one occasion and this was I think actually this was what caused you and I to start talking. Yeah. So there was a potential client who admitted that they were really struggling on a vacancy. They'd given it to a marketing recruiter. They hadn't come good. I said, just let just let me come and have a coffee with you to talk about it. My usual quite soft kind of sales approach, I guess. Sure. And they were really I was speaking to the office manager, I think. And she was kind of being the intermediary between me and the, I think it was either a managing okay. director or an account director or something like that. So the person that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super keen, super keen, super keen. And then the, I didn't hear anything back. So then I phoned up and she said, uh, uh, I, yeah, sorry, Adam, but the feedback was that they didn't like something that you'd posted on LinkedIn. So they don't wish to take it any further. And then she gave me some details so I could figure out which post it was. Yeah, I was going to say, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I figured out what it was. And I was kind of quite taken aback by it. And it made me feel really crap because I sort of thought, I'm just going to have to stop doing this LinkedIn stuff mm. because, you know, how many other people am I? putting off or whatever the case may be yeah i can't but you then, know as good as as good as this seems to be and feels i can't afford mm. to like ruin a business mm. if, if i'm actually out there upsetting 80 percent of the people in the world yeah 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 so i kind of like sort of took stock and thought about it for a couple of days and then i put a post out a really really sort of i'm not a particularly cheesy person but it was about as sort of like heart on sleeve as you kind of get really for me um, sure. and I, I was really honest to my kind of network and my following and i just said look i put a post out this is the conversation should I a carry on as I am because I run a successful business, moderately successful business, and I still get engagement, or should I just sack it all off completely? Mm. And I think there was four or five hundred comments on there, and near nearly every single person was saying, "Carry on as you are, mate. Don't let it get you down." You know, yeah. what's that? What's that? I can't remember what phrase. There's a phrase, "Don't let the bastards get you down" or something I, like that. I, but they, I think that is the phrase. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that is the phrase. And they were sort of a lot of people were saying things like that. And then I sort of thought back to that personal brand piece that I was speaking to you about a moment ago. Mm. And it probably just turns out that I might not have got on with that managing director anyway because he dis if he if he disagreed with my post so much so that it meant that he would stop uh trying to find someone for his business what's more sure. important is his opinion on a post i've written or him attracting talent to his company and yeah. i just sort of thought eh, maybe they're just not for me and that was <laughs> and, how and I, it's not I like it. you, but it's not like you're not gonna if that is you know if you're do, doing social media right <laughs> that's the wrong thing to say but you know if you <laughs> are um you know being honest when you're posting and being yourself yeah and then someone's like, oh, I don't want to work with you because of that post. It's not like you're not going to say that in the meeting at some point yeah, or something exactly. like it. Or it's going to come up on a phone call or whatever yeah. that was. You know what I mean? And if that is the case, like, I think that's what's kind of amazing about the last, 
well, that I've seen over the last sort of t- 10 years or so is more and more people were just saying, I don't have to work with you. Yeah. don't have to work with you. Like the world is very, very, very small now because I can get in touch with everyone. It's a massive yeah. place that I can actually, you know, connect with. Yeah. Um, so if you don't want to work with me, that's cool. Like there's plenty more fishing to see. That's great. But tell me yeah. now and I'll, I'll, I, I, can, I can leave you alone. Because I'm like down the this. road, yeah. Yeah, because I'm like this all the time. This is, this is me. 24 yeah, <laughs> 7 if you yeah, want to work yeah. with it that's great like let's find that out now and get it done earlier mm. yeah um, i think but you were well, something you mentioned there like this is me i'm like this all the time the authenticity around being who you are and who you want to be mm. is is massively important because if you try to change who you are to fit in a different shell or in a different shape you're going to come unstuck because you can't act like that person all the time no <laughs> yeah you just you just drive yourself absolutely insane so yeah i I am who i am and i'm the same person obviously within reason i am Mm. the same person in a meeting with a potential client as i would be talking to the guys in my office or if you and i went for a beer or whatever the case may be i'm I'm the same i'm the same bloke at the end of the day you know i'm not a massively corporate person i can be if i need to be but i'm just a friendly chap who enjoys his job and likes talking to people and are you 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 know, I'm. That's <laughs> why you had you on the show, man. No, no. Um, um, but I'm seeing it more and more now because I was always. I was talking to someone yesterday and saying like I was the least. I was always the most lax person, you know, in in corporate. It was always mm. definitely. I wore a suit, a stuff. I wasn't laying there all like falling apart. But I was also. <laughs> I was also dropping. You know, the first person to make a dick and fart joke and uh, yeah, and, say, yeah, yeah. and say this is bullshit and walk out of the room. Um, yeah, that was me. So I feel like it's it's more and more now that that's kind of what people are across the board. Less and less is the corporate thing. You know, when you get up to massive companies, it's still very much there. But mm. it seems like more and more businesses are okay with that. They want to work with people who are kind of a little bit normal. It's it's okay if we unbutton our, our, our shirt and, oh, we don't need a tie say, on. Yeah, here like, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The whole time. So, I remember just dying in in sales jobs when i'd be on the phone 24 7 never going to seeing clients i've been like why am i sat here in a three-piece like, I, just, <laughs> I don't get it like i didn't even want to have to buy a three-piece why have i got yeah, one like, i can do I, this job in shorts i swear to god i can do this job in shorts. yeah the, it might, the only thing you need a waistcoat for is a game of snooker or a waistcoat <laughs> oh, like, i don't know a little bit of magic you know <laughs> oh yeah yeah forms. there is that yeah 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 a big yeah Mad, magic very very good very good <laughs> uh, but yeah no you get yeah you just got to kind of do what you do what you can do really i've got a friend of mine actually who's uh I've got to be careful what I say here because I you'll see why in a minute. But he works for a bank in a like commercial banking role, and he um, goes to work in a suit and all this that and the other. And he's been actively asked at work to encourage his LinkedIn engagement. Right. But he has to send a post every post he writes to his manager for it to be approved before he can post it. No. you You just sort of think that's really counterintuitive because he's a smart, creative, you know, switched on lad who could write some really cool content. And he's not allowed. His wings are clipped completely. And every post is exactly the same. Insert, the insert superlative, insert superlative, yeah, bang, yeah, yeah. post, done. And it's just shit. Contact us out. I don't know when, but businesses start need to start to realize that the people they employ are adults. And yeah. if you're gonna, if you're gonna trust your, you know, anyone within your business to pick up a phone and say hello, GL Pro UK or whatever, they can mm. engage with anyone in business, customers, suppliers, whatever then you can and you ask that person to go on linkedin you can trust them right mm-hmm. or you can't trust them and they should get out of your business really quickly yeah. right? <laughs> you know hello what's the, what's, Sorry, the, what's, the, what's the dog's name oscar oscar solid dog's name it's just yeah it's just he's just a bit of a prat but we love him <laughs> <laughs> bit like, a bit good. like me really <laughs> it's, it's, it's a solid description of every pet and every uh, every husband yeah isn't it? absolutely yeah pretty much <laughs> um but you know it, it's it I, I had to do the same thing you know i worked in a very very fair company and stuff who wouldn't but it wasn't until i like felt comfortable enough to just say whatever and it not be a problem for someone else because mm. i still had the old way of thinking you know it wasn't until we started our own business that i started actually getting involved on linkedin and posting otherwise i'd just yeah. be using it as a as a sales tool to connect with you know prospects um wasn't until then that it, it started getting good and i started to see inbound and and yeah. it's amazing that it's like you know so i'm not doing as many oh i don't have to do as many calls anymore because i'm posting on linkedin yeah the problem is that it takes time 
And if businesses mm. aren't going to understand that and actually like allow their people to be the adults that they've employed, checking your posts, no. I mean, I'd, I, I, I agree, maybe put in a policy to say like, look, if we hate it, we might ask you to put to take it down. Yeah. All right. No worries. The thing is, this guy, this guy, the reason this guy's been doing it is he is he's all about switching uh, commercial bank accounts from one account to the to one company to the company that he works for. Gotcha. So in theory, you, if I ran a business that had you know hundreds of millions of pounds turnover, <laughs> and I was going to move my bank account, the thing that's going to make me move is being bought into the individual who's going to do that and complete the transaction, 100%. not some crappy little oh you know we've helped this customer do this and they think it's great it's like no. brilliant inject a bit of personality into it and i might then come and inquire to do it myself yes but exactly just and, that's, and people draconian. buy from people like people buy from oh, yeah, people yeah. like there are 50 companies that do exactly you know as a minimum exactly what your friend does right simple yeah, as that sure. there's a bunch of that and there's a mm -hmm. uh, you know 500 people out there trying to do what he's doing to you know it means i can get 500 calls a day if i'm the right person to speak to that's ridiculous yeah. Like, you yeah, know, but, exactly. but, but if I, if I'm on the phone and that guy picks up and I'm like, Adam, <laughs> 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 Hey man, I did it. You know, and that's, that's exactly what it's for in its simplest term, like just in yeah. its simplest term, just even yeah. if you're still including it with sales, at sure. least it breaks down that barrier a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love the fact you got the, out, the, out, the outcry and the outpouring of, uh, of, uh, of love from people, you know, when seeing the negative response and then oh, that's, the, that's the nicest, the nicest people have been to me on LinkedIn. Was that <laughs> I've never had, I've never had more pats on the back and more people go, no, carry on, mate. We love it. It's great. And I was like, Oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> people actually like what I'm saying. This is cool. So, yeah. <laughs> So, so what, what, what terrible thing's going to happen next so people can be nice to you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they get depressed and all this and the other. God bless it. Um, so, right. So uh, as we were saying earlier, a bunch of people looking out there, they're going to be looking for work. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, like you were saying, you know, you, 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 you play specific candidates for roles which are available. Yeah. But if people are out there now and, they, you know, there's going to be an awful lot of people looking for work. What else can people do? Like just simple, simple tactics that people can do. Because I know enough, not enough people are sat there right now hammering LinkedIn. I know not enough yeah. people are like creating their own brand. But, but you do this more than I. So what do you think people yeah. should be doing to get themselves out there? Well, you've got you've got to be active where you're going to be seen and where it's going to be relevant. So I only recruit in marketing. So anything I'm going to say now is probably only really applicable. Well, I, I'm only thinking about it from a marketing perspective, right? Absolutely. But you've got marketing candidates and, and 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 individuals all over linkedin i'm not talking about people who are you know in sort of blue collar jobs where they might not even use linkedin for no. example but uh, i think you've got to make your linkedin profile sort of sing your own praises a little bit and i think you've got to try and make it a bit like a cv it's laid yeah. out very similar to a cv reverse chronological order your education's usually at the bottom You've got a photo, your job title, your contact details, a blurb, and your work history. It's True. basically the same as a CV, right? Yeah, you know, that's it. But I think there's, there's two main reasons that people need to sort of try and put a bit of effort in and put things in there. Firstly, a lot of recruiters and managing directors and marketing directors and CMOs and VPs hang out on LinkedIn. 100%. And they're the people who are going to get you your jobs. So it might be an HR manager who might introduce you if it's not a recruiter or a talent acquisition person. But mm -hmm. it's your VPs, head ofs, marketing managers, and your specialist recruiters who are the people that you want to be seen by if you're looking for a new role. So make sure you've got all of your information on there. So keywords are important. If you're a digital marketing manager, I yeah. want to see SEO, paid search, paid social, PPC, I want to see all of those evidenced on your profile and the success I like that, that you've so, had. So thinking of keywords, not in in like an SEO or mm. digital sense, but keywords as in you're the person or make right. So and we're we're sat the either side either side of uh, you know what the candidate's looking for. I'm a, I'm an yeah. employer. You're helping them get there, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I, I want to see it in front of me. I don't have time or the energy to look through anything apparently um <laughs> uh, but you know it, 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 it more importantly if you lay out the key bits in front of me like you say i do dun 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 if i'm looking to employ i'll be like well i'm looking for someone who does seo and paid and tangible yeah, dun, dun, yeah, 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 as yeah, opposed yeah, to yeah. having to read 16 paragraphs and be like oh he does paid yeah 
Exactly. And I think to move that sort of more focusing onto a CV, which again, everybody sort of has and needs from time to mm -hmm. time, you've got your name and your personal details, a bit of a blurb that says you can work as in part of a team, you're not going to steal the pens and all the and the other that goes into the sort of the blurb. And then underneath that, what I suggest to everybody to do is have key achievements and some competencies and some skills. And then the rest of the CV is more detail about your jobs you've had, the firms you've worked for, because in that mm -hmm. box, you know, say you're a generalist broad marketer and you're applying for a digital role, then yeah. in the achievements box, you put all your digital marketing achievements and your skills, you put, you highlight all your digital achievements. If you're then going to go for a branding role, then you put the brands you've worked for in those boxes and you can chop sure. and change it to suit the role that you're working for. Sorry, I want a bit of a tangent now to kind of answer your overall question. No, 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 this is important because otherwise it's and just think, brush strokes. This is great. Yeah, and I think that I think the other the other thing that's important as well is try and tailor every application that you make for the role that you're applying for. So I always did this, right? I did this for the whole time. Uh, I always used to like write the top section specific to that role mm -hmm. um, for every CV that I would send. It, it it meant it was a nightmare when I was uploading it through uh, you know Read or Monster or whatever the website was because mm -hmm. um, I'd have to do it specifically for each one. But I found that yeah. that was really really powerful, and I'd get more interviews from it yeah by just taking the extra time yeah yeah absolutely because you know at the end of the day uh, 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 you've got a job spec isn't written about a person a job spec is written about a need within a business so <laughs> you've, yeah, right, you've, yeah. you've got to then try and bridge that gap and you've got to go right you've got a piece of paper with a lot of bullet points on that you need in your business i am the person that can do that job and I'm going to bridge the gap with this two page piece of A4 and show you and tell you how I can do it. <laughs> and that's what you've, that's what you've got to do, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think not, not, I'm not saying you've got to rewrite your entire CV for every role that you apply for, but also don't apply through like, again, this is going to sound terrible when we say this, don't apply through job boards. Right. So if you see, say you want to work for Google and you spot a job on total jobs for Google, Totally, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to say these things. I'm hoping I am, or I might get I, bleeped out. Who knows? I feel pretty good about it, so keep going. Total jobs. Other job boards are available. Other search engines are available. <laughs> well. But we're going to use these guys hypothetically. So if I saw a job at Google that I wanted, I would not apply through Total Jobs. I right. would go onto LinkedIn, and I would find who I think is the hiring manager for that role, or I would find an HR manager or someone who works in internal recruitment or talent acquisition connect up with them and go, hey, I'm Adam, I've noticed this vacancy, I'd be really keen to have some kind of conversation with someone about it, can you point me in the right direction, please? And if they point me back to the job advert on Reed, I'll try someone else. Yeah. And it's a kind of a, it's like almost like a personal business development tool, if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. You've got to get in, because if, yeah, you'll get in touch with the right person and then they'll go, oh, why have you messaged me instead of applying for the job? Oh, well, I noticed on the job spec that you'd written loads and loads and loads about paid Something. social but you haven't mentioned anything about organic yeah. and i wondered whether you need that or not and instantly yeah. they're going to know that you've read it they're going to know you know your shit and they're going to carry on the conversation and you are 20 times more likely to get in front of them for an interview than if you'd clicked apply on total jobs i yeah. think Big, well i've always found the same thing because then you're hoping that it goes into a recruiter who cares that day or uh, you know has you know wants to fill that job or yeah. they haven't had sixty five thousand people click through all at one time um mm. that's really really helpful honestly that's that's really really helpful because that's that's kind of what i always used to do um because it's what how i used to do sales if i was yeah. selling something i would you know use linkedin so i, ha I had an uh, you know an advantage there knowing how to get through to people and I was like well i'll use this for a job you know i'm not <laughs> not super smart but i know i can kind of <laughs> pull from one thing to the other um yeah but, but it, it it literally is that simple if you want to work somewhere why not connect with everyone in the department that you're going to work with and then they're up then they're, they're higher ups and then release content which is kind of like you and that they would be interested in being part of it's and we're, it's we're back to that personal brand bit again mm. so, so do you think they, see it so do you think people should do you know really focus on fixing the personal brand and 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 you know taking those they're going to take a, a month or six weeks to start cleaning things up getting content out getting some bits and pieces out before going through that kind of uh, uh, connecting side well, yeah, in an I, I was going to say not everyone's got time, but we're in, a, we're in a climate at the moment where everyone's just thinking, I'm going to rewatch Narcos for the fourth time just because I'm bored. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, no, I think if you if you can, you could kind of do it all at the same time and be really honest that you're doing it. Yeah. You know, like if you if you're someone who's looking for a new role, I mean, the only thing that's slightly <laughs> tricky is if you're employed and you want to move and want a new job, but you don't want to make it abundantly obvious to your employer that you want to move. Yeah. You've got to be a bit coy about it. But Absolutely. Yeah, if you're kind of just I think yeah, just be be yourself and if you if you're passionate about what you do for a job which you should be if you're not passionate about what you do for a job then quit and find something else to do that you're passionate about because life will be so much more enjoyable 100%. if you're fortunate <laughs> enough to be passionate about what you do then just pump your opinions out politely and question people and if you get confident enough and call people out on their bullshit politely and then that will then in turn create a bit of a personal brand and there you go. As simple as that. Adam, that was amazing. And if people want to get in touch, how, what's the best place? Where, where's the best place for them to find you? I am on LinkedIn. I don't really use any other forms of social media, really. Um, so it's just Adam Nichols, Nichols with one L. Um, and then I've got like a finance qualification. So it's Adam Nichols, CFAP. Um, but the business is Rosalind David. So I'm, yeah, I'm about, I'm there. <laughs> and as a follower of yours, um, you guys should check it out because it's really, it's, as we were saying earlier, follow people that you get value from. And I've been getting, like, I know for a fact, ever since I, I found Adam, it's one of those ones that pops up and I'm like, ooh, sweet. Um, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. That's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> no problem That's at great. all. And thanks very much. And guys, thanks for watching.